joint health sector union say due to the inability of government to resolve their concerns, they will have to proceed on strike. There's a statement coming through from all the uh, medical associations which we have on your screens right now. Let's bring you a breakdown of their concerns uh, before we get into the details of what's uh, transpiring on that front. But you see the uh, headline right there. It's the Joint Health Workers Union and uh, professional association. So there's a release coming through and that's the constituent group on your screens right now. The Ghana Medical Association, the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association. You also have the Health Services Work Workers Union of TUC Ghana. And then we also have the Ghana and Hospital Pharmacist Association. Now, excerpts of the statement reads that the Ghana Medical Association, uh, registered nurses and all the groups pointed uh, above there, being constituent members of organized labor, made a request to government for a 20% cost of living allowances uh, for members in the light of the prevailing difficult economic situations in the country. Now, unfortunately, like other members of organized labor, we are yet to receive favorable response from government. Uh, we had hopes that the meeting convened by government with organized labor on 12th of July, which was yesterday, uh, would have resolved the issue, but the meeting failed to achieve its objective. We therefore served notice to government uh, as an employer that if by the 22nd of July 2022 the negotiations on COLA is not completed, the aforementioned health sector workers will have no other option than to embark on a series of actions uh, to, uh, to, as spelt out uh, below, which will uh, in no doubt disturb the industrial harmony within the health sector. And it's signed by uh, the four labor unions uh, as being pointed out right there on your screen. So let's hear from one of the groups involved, which is the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association. Joining us now is uh, David Tinkran Chum, who is the general secretary of that group. Thank you so much, sir, for your time here on the poll. So uh, it appears that you're giving up on negotiations which only started yesterday. Why are you not patient uh, just to wait on government and see if indeed there will be some results? Good afternoon, my brother. Good afternoon to your viewers and listeners. Uh, we are not giving up on anything. I think it's a work in progress. We expect governments to do the needful. We, as we stated in our press release, we anticipate that yesterday's meeting was going to resolve all the issues as discussed previously. Don't forget that forum, which all these composite unions are members, earlier issued a statement, even before 1st of May, asking government to cushion workers, all right, even before Dr. Yaoba speaking on behalf of organized labor, also reiterated that point. So, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's not like we, we, we are not waiting on government to resolve anything. I mean, you heard expressly what the Deputy Minister of uh, uh, Labor said, yeah. that until the teachers call off the strike, we are not going to continue the negotiations. I think that they should reconsider their decision. Otherwise, how, how about recourse to the labor law? And, and in good faith, if you're indeed negotiating with government, the expectation is that uh, you would, of, of course, call off any industrial action that you're embarking on for negotiations to proceed. That's the appropriate um, way of dealing with issues on the labor front, isn't it? You are right. But they did not call the teacher unions yesterday. They called organized labor. And the teacher unions are part of organized labor. You cannot appropriate and reprobate, OK? Now, according to the Public uh, uh, Financial Management Act, Act 921 of 2016, by April, government should have finished negotiating with organized labor, the base pay for 2023. That hasn't happened. It's an act of parliament. That was palpably violated by the government. So at one point, you want to quote the law, at another point, you, 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 what I say. So what I'm trying to say is that, look, we are not in normal times. And the teachers didn't go there as teacher unions. They came as organized labor. So we're, and organized labor is not on strike. And you call a meeting between organized labor and government. And for that matter, we see no reason why they couldn't resolve the issues yesterday with that composite group called organized labor. Rather than to just benchmark on the fact that teachers are on strike to say that we cannot continue the negotiations until the teachers call off the strike. I mean, to, to be fair to government, it appears that um, organized labor uh, is being oblivious of the current times in which we find ourselves. The uh, economic crunch is staring us right in the face. And this is where 
or when organized labor chooses to make your demands on the cost of living allowances. It's, a, it's as though you're not putting or averting your minds to what's happening to the Ghanaian economy as we speak. As a matter of fact, it's even more imperative that government cushion workers at this time. Okay, the reason for the cushioning is, is even more palpable now than it used to be. All right. You see, we cannot always ask workers to bite the bullet whilst others are living large. Okay. So as far as we are concerned, yes, we admit that we are in perilous times, but workers deserve better. And we are not asking for too much. We but, have already sacrificed and, 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 and in fact at the time four percent mm -hmm. and seven percent. Okay, let me make my point. Yeah. Accepting 4% and 7%, which our members did not embrace. Some even speculate that leaders have gone to take bribe. That is why we agree to 4 and 7%. Government begged us at the time. They adduced cogent reasons why we should agree to such a, a paltry increase. And we agreed. Okay, and we, we bear the brunt of it from our members. And this is not going to continue. 22nd of July. It's not a realistic timeline, is it? Looking at uh, where negotiations are currently. It appears that government has agreed with you for further engagements on the cost of living allowances. You, you, you do not expect that within 10 days, just a period of 10 days, government will be able to handle all your concerns on, on COLA. Oh, I think um, if government is committed, you can only finish this by tomorrow. I mean, it shouldn't take us more than 10 years. Are you not simplifying matters? This is organized labor that we're dealing with. For instance, give us, give us a sense of your membership in terms of the numbers, if, if you could uh, give us that number, and then look at the others in, for instance, the teacher unions and other labor unions as well. The number is quite huge, isn't it? For instance, the public sector workers union are pegging their figures around 27,000 members. Government can find the money immediately, you agree? Well, that is what we are seeking to suggest, and I disagree with you, palpably. Now, what we are saying is that we have three labor centers in this country. So TUC, GFL, and Forum, all these uh, labor centers have uh, unions, okay, or associations under them. We are talking about public sector workers. There is no way Kula can be given to nurses and doctors and midwives and they will leave our teachers. That will not happen. What we want the citizens to understand is that we are all speaking with one voice, whether it's a teacher union or dog, uh, nurses union or midwife union. We are speaking with one voice. We are saying that we are in perilous times. Our purchasing uh, uh, power has been er eroded and therefore government must cushion us. We, government can run to IMF. We, government is our IMF. So if we are in difficult times, we can only government, choose government. Go government is your IMF. Out. So that is why we are asking. And I'm not too sure we are asking for too much. Mm. We are going strictly by the law. The law says that before you can take any course of action, you should be able to notify the employer uh, 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 seven clear days. And that's exactly what we have done. So we are not in violation. Well, uh, the sources, are, sources are disclosing to us that, for instance, um, within the early stages of that engagement, you... Um, the government gave the option of spreading the payments across uh, and not giving you the 20 percent. How come that you, I mean, if you indeed wanted something to cushion you, you did not op opt for that first view that what was put across by, by government? No such thing had been tabled. <laughs> then I was in the meeting, but I can mm. assure you that I've been, I've been in all meetings. Government has not come with anything. We have tabled 20 percent. We have declared this 20% on the table. That's what we have on the table. Government can come and say, oh, I can't get 20%. Or I can, after all, at the time that we were asking for uh, 20%, inflation was 18.5%. Now inflation is hovering around 27%. And for that matter, I'm going to give you 25%. We thank government and move on. On the other hand, if government says that, oh, I can give you 15%, 20% is too much, we can tell government, oh, 15 is too small, come up maybe up to 18 or something. So the negotiation hasn't started. So I'm, I'm, I'm at sea as to where you got that information. Okay, so, so for instance, you, you, you were in that meeting, so give us a sense of what happened. The finance minister was there, in charge of the kitty. What sense do you get from him? The meeting that was held yesterday did not table anything that you can consider it as negotiations. We didn't even start anything. We just finished with the introduction, and they wanted the teacher unions to step out. They wanted to you know, have or uh, go into concourse with the teacher unions. And that is what brought the, the, the misunderstanding, which later on culminated in, in, in the working out of the teachers. So it's not like we have started anything. Negotiation hasn't started. 
nobody has tabled anything. So I'm at sea as to where you got that information that mm. government tabled something, they want to spread anything. Mm. We haven't spoken about any amount of money, any percentage, and how, or the modalities of payment. We haven't even gotten so, there. So yet. in that regard, if it happens that government is um, opting for a slash in the figure, 20%, a slash in that figure, how, how, how down, I mean, in terms of the slashing the figures, how, how much allowance do you have in, in slashing? I the am not seized with the power to determine what organized labor will, will, will agree on that. But what I'm trying to tell you is that we are open minded right. people, we are leaders of integrity, and for that matter, if government says that you are asking for 20 percent this is what i can offer we can begin to judge all that is where i can say that government is serious and government is prepared to resolve this ambas so for now the posture of uh, you workers in the health sector is that government is not committed to paying cola is that the posture you get you are right i mean as far as i'm concerned no i'm not not committed to pay because i remember the first meeting that was held the finance minister expressly indicated that the president has informed them that they should find ways and means to resolve the matter in a manner that everybody will be comfortable. That tells you that the government has, the president himself has admitted that times are hard and therefore something must give. That thing that must give is what we expect the government to come clean with it so that we can, we can sit down and talk. Mm. As simple as that. Uh, David, I mean, here's the big problem out there. Looking at the coalition involved here, in the uh, health sector. It involves the doctors and nurses and goes even to the pharmaceuticals. Uh, the belief is that the implication of what you are threatening could be dire for Ghanaians. This is the health sector. Are you mindful of the action you want to embark on? What you need to understand is that we are not immune to sicknesses. And even as leaders or our members are also susceptible as any other Ghanaian. So it is not a comfortable decision. That is why we didn't just jump and dis declare the strike action. We've given government ample time uh, based on the details of the labor law. And I believe that, as I indicated earlier on, they should be able to resolve this matter in the shortest possible time. I actually take us seven days to address this issue if government is committed. So your message to those who are anxious out there that they may not find any hospital to go into by the 22nd of July. What we are saying is that this issue should be able to the government should be able to address this matter as quickly as possible. Nobody has to be apprehensive. There's no need to be apprehensive. There's no, to be, no need to be anxious. We believe that if government is committed, we can resolve this matter by close of tomorrow. It's as simple as that? You, you think so? You think, I mean, this is something that could be solved in, in a matter of days? Yeah, as simple as that. But I don't see this as a big deal. As far as I'm concerned, Labour has come up. Yes, Labour has come up with Labour has come up with a position and we are not belligerent, we are not intransigent in that position. It's up to government to also put a counter proposal on the table and we can move on. I don't see mm. this as a major issue anyway, at all. I'm grateful for your time. That's the General Secretary of the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association, David Tinkrang Chum, joining us here. But that's not all. Public universities are also beginning to bear the brunt of labor agitations as the Senior Staff Association, uh, Universities of Ghana, is asking all members to withdraw their services with immediate effect owing to the failure of government to pay the 20% um, of their basic salary as cost of living allowance. Hector Owahine Champong is National Secretary of the group. The purpose of today's press briefing is to express our dissatisfaction and frustrations about the manner in which the government and its agencies are treating senior staff of public universities in Ghana. Some of the issues are mentioned below. One, the insensitivity of government to grant the proposed 20% COLA to senior staff cadre of public universities in Ghana. Two. Refusal by the government to extend generic allowances to all senior staff of public universities in Ghana. The leadership finds it outrageous to believe as there are no such documents which stipulates that such allowances should be given to entitled staff which is alien to the scheme of service of public universities in Ghana. Yes. And it is used as a vehicle to create salary disparity in the senior staff category. Three. Failure by the government to pay the accrued interest on tier 2 pension arrears from 2010 to 2016 
out of which some members had died due to the emotional stress they went through. It is sad to note that most of these people have served the universities and mother Ghana wholeheartedly between 25 to 35 years and go home with a scanty amount as their tier two lump sum. In all sincerity, do you expect us to continue rendering our services in the wake of no, no, no. of this injustice? No. no. We wish to place on record that, per the provisions of the act, government has acted illegally and the union is contemplating legal action against government in due course. And that's the side of the story. Let's hear from Isaac Donko, chairperson of the Senior Staff Association, Universities of Ghana. Isaac, thank you for your time. So give us a sense of how many institutions are involved here and how many universities may virtually grind to a halt if um, it's, it's taking effect today, right? Uh, Isaac, I'm asking if um, your decision is taking effect today. And, and kindly unmute for us so we can hear you. Thank you very much. Right. Good afternoon to you and your viewers. Yes, the strike is taking effect today. All our workers, all our members have been asked to go home when rest until they hear from us. Yes, uh, but I was asking uh, about the extent or, of, of this um, industrial action. How many institutions are involved and uh, how many universities may be affected as a result of your directive? All the 15 public universities in Ghana are affected. Uh, negotiations started just yesterday and I was just asking your counterparts in the health sector as to why you're not patient enough for government. Um, is it the case that um, you can't wait any longer? Thank you. Yesterday, there wasn't any negotiation on our part. We didn't see them to be negotiating with us because government came unprepared. They were not ready to negotiate. They were just joking with us. So as a union, we have no choice than to advise ourselves, and that's what we've done. Uh, and then you go ahead to point out in the press release that you've given to, to my colleague now, uh, pointing out that you may be heading to court over what you claim is um, the illegality being perpetuated by government. Um, what, what's your take on, on the legal aspect of that? You, you may not be a lawyer, but what's the position of the group on this? Yes, as you said, I am not a lawyer. So we've given our document to our lawyers. But they deliver the Pensions Act 64. Government supposed to remit all the farm managers so that the farm managers can also invest the fund. So that when I'm going on pension, I will get what is due me. But it's what is happening to us. Ours 2010 to 2016, no show. Mm. Last Isaac, we're losing Isaac there, um, but uh, his point is well made. Uh, that's the chairperson of the Senior Staff Association, Universities of Ghana. Um, it appears um, that, well, uh, Isaac, if you could just uh, wrap up for us um, on, on the message to government and what it is that um, we need to know about your conditions. We still have some challenges reaching uh, Isaac Donko, chairperson of the Senior Staff Association, Universities of Ghana. But uh, we'll definitely reconnect in our subsequent bulletins uh, and bring you some updates. But as we speak, doctors and nurses as well have also threatened to lay down their tools uh, effective July 22. We'll uh, keep our eyes on that and bring you some updates. We're also. <laughs>